So we can't talk about growth hormone without talking about MK677 or ibutamorin, okay? A lot of you guys that are in like the bodybuilding community, the SARMs community already know about MK677. So basically what it is, is instead of taking synthetic growth hormone, as we discussed above, you know, your pituitary gland actually secretes growth hormone. And so what this is, is it's actually basically a, a growth hormone secretagogue. What that means is you basically take it either orally or inject it, and it actually works through chemical signals that signal your brain to secrete growth hormone. So it's almost like taking growth hormone just without taking the synthetic stuff, you're, you're telling your body to make more of it, okay? And so how does it work? Well, it's actually a ghrelin agonist. Um, for those that don't know, ghrelin is actually like the hunger uh, signal in your body. And when you can trigger that hunger signal, it can actually trigger the secretion of growth hormone, guys. Some of you guys want to get kind of like pedantic in the comments and like correct every little thing I'm saying. Maybe it's helpful to some of the users. But in general, I'm doing a very cursory view, guys. So, but please, if I say something incorrect, please correct correct me in the comments. And so uh, and I'll, I'll put up a little uh, a page that describes that mechanism if you want to read about it more yourself. So why would you ever choose to use MK677 over growth hormone? Well, access and cost are the main things. And so you can basically go onto any SARMS website and order MK677. And I think I said that this is actually sub Q. I don't think this is actually inject. I think it's it's primarily orally taken. And it's either, I mean, I'm sure that there is some sort of sub Q formulation that subcutaneous, but most of the time it's either a liquid or a pill forms from the cursory view, like review that I've done, guys. I've never done MK677. I would never recommend it, but that's kind of besides the point. And so it is a fraction of growth hormone. And so you go to a SARMS website, I, I don't know, it's probably like, probably less than $100 for a month supply, okay? Compared to like thousands of dollars for growth growth hormone, and then you don't need a prescription to order it, okay? But here's the caveat. It's illegal to take it, at least in the United States, okay? So when you go to buy it, it is like not for human consumption. It's for research purposes. So basically, if you have lab rats and you're trying to do a study on MK677, you can order it for your lab rats. So if you go into a lot of like these SARMs blogs, it's like, oh yeah, my lab rat took this and gained like five pounds of muscle. So it's kind of a running joke. But um, so basically, it is not for human consumption. So once again, guys, never do anything that's against the law, okay? Why would you take this? So what are the benefits? Well, it has honestly the same benefits of growth hormone. You're increasing growth hormone levels in your body. Growth hormone is one of the major hormones that's responsible for recovery from all kinds of different injuries. One of the reasons why I recommend good sleep when you get injured is because when you get into deep sleep, guess what it triggers? More growth hormone secretion on a natural level, on a safe level. There's actually studies looking at this. There's actually quite a bit of data. And so like here's a study looking at hip fracture recovery. And you can see that taking MK677 expedited that process. Here's a study looking at neurogenesis or from a like central nervous system nerve repair aspect where you can see that it actually promotes more healthy nerve tissue. Here's a study showing improvement in like heart muscle perfusion, meaning the amount of blood going to your heart muscle. And so healthy blood flow is a key for injury recovery in general, guys. That's why I recommend so many blood flow stimulants. Yeah, yeah I mean, things are gonna increase blood flow, increase your nitric oxide. There's actually a good amount of data on this, specifically when we're talking about an injury recovery pathway, okay? You know, one of the things that is commonly thrown out that like this is a SARM or a selective androgen receptor modifier, okay? This is not gonna affect your testosterone levels at all whatsoever, guys. You don't need to cycle on or cycle off or do like a, a post-cycle therapy. This isn't like steroids, okay? This is a performance enhancing drug. So if you're trying to take this for injury recovery and you're in some kind of drug tested sport, you will fail. So keep that in mind as well. And I'm sure growth hormone is, you know, also on the WADA band list, guys, as probably everything that I'm going to be talking about today is. So please just keep that in mind, okay? And so bodybuilders often abuse this as a way to be like pseudo natty because um, it's not actually modifying their testosterone, but increased levels of growth hormone can be associated with um, increased muscle mass and decreased fat content. But there are problems with this, okay? Unlike the HGH above, this actually works by stimulating your hunger hormone or the ghrelin hormone. And so what is the problem with that? You're going to be hungry as heck, okay? You are going to be starving. And so, you know, I, I challenge you to go on YouTube or, you know, go on any kind of blog and just read people's experience with MK677. You know, it, it's it's just, it's going to make you hungry. So if you're already prone to obesity or being overweight, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. And it also has the same problems as above with growth hormone. So especially things like your insulin sensitivity, guys. This stuff has made guys go from not being a diabetic 
diabetic to being a diabetic to in some cases even needing insulin, guys. And so you need to be aware of these side effects. Also, specifically with MK677, there's been different rat studies that have looked and they have actually shown that it can trigger some of the same areas in the brain that are associated with trauma or PTSD. And so you could potentially have some psychological side effects from taking the MK677. It is not just this like benign compound that a lot of I don't want to be mean, but like stupid YouTube reviewers that don't know enough about this stuff just say, oh yeah, MCAV 677, it's fine. It doesn't affect your test. You don't need a PCT. It's totally healthy. It's absolutely not, guys. Once again, specifically for this, we're talking about from an injury recovery pathway, okay? And the other big thing is that this is not for human consumption, guys. And another big thing with like a lot of these compounds is quality control. Because this stuff is not really like made for humans and it's not, it's not regulated like it is for humans. So you could go onto like SARMS.com and try to buy MK677 and they send you some like tablets or some liquid and it's not even MK677. It's, it's you know, sawdust basically. And so, you know, if you're going to try this route, first of all, you know, this is not the place for you to learn about like what places have the best quality stuff, how to take it, what's your dosage, all that stuff. I, I don't know that guys. That's not the point of this video. The point is to put out information, not for you to take it, but for you to, you know, potentially discuss it or like if you have an injured lab rat or something, you can use it for your lab rat for injury recovery. So I already mentioned maximizing blood flow, guys. And so, you know, I'm going to bring it up. So this is our Vigor, okay? It's our pre-workout. It's on Amazon. It's getting absolutely fantastic reviews. We've got almost 25 five-star reviews, guys. This is a nitric oxide boosting product. Nitric oxide is what's responsible for erection quality. It's what's responsible for blood flow. It's what can help with injury recovery, the actual endothelial lining of your cells. All of this stuff, I have gone through piece by piece to appropriately dose this for the maximum efficacy. And I may a whole video guys what you should look for in like a pe pre-workout going through each and every ingredient here and why it works guys highly suggest you check it out if you're trying to recover from an injury or if you just want maximum eq and so you know it's nighttime i i like to have maximum erection quality so i always take a little scoop before bed it also helps me recovery in the nighttime phase i get better like nighttime erections honestly this stuff is pretty potent too so i only need half a scoop i don't know if you can see that Good stuff. And then guys, we also have our virility here. Okay, so this is our actually, basically our semen booster, guys. It improves the quality, the quantity, the volume, and even the taste of your semen. So I have a video out on this. So if you're interested in learning more, check that out. It's also on leviathansubs.com, available on Amazon. Let's get back to it. So hey guys, I'm editing in this portion here because I was actually talking to BD about this video and he brought up some very interesting points about other peptides that I actually heard, hadn't heard about. First things first, you guys should all put in the comments uh, BD or hit him up on Reddit, you know, make a video about peptides because I actually, you know, if you're interested about learning more about this stuff, I would actually make a video about the potential implication of peptides. And so anyways, let's get into it here and guys. And so we were talking about growth hormone. We talked about some growth hormones secreted but there's also two particular different types of peptides that I think are very important. So one is called the GHRP, the growth hormone releasing peptides, okay? What these are is they're basically, obviously they help to increase your, pet, your growth hormone levels, but they actually stimulate the pituitary gland to secrete additional growth hormone, okay? And so you can see, I mean, if you're interested, there's a, you know, a video, uh, a paper I'll put up here where you can read more about it. And so they promote the release of the additional growth hormone releasing hormones, which we'll talk about in just a second. And it also opposes a somatostatin. So what is somatostatin? Basically what you need to know about it is it actually limits your the amount of growth hormone you have and so if your growth hormone levels are getting to an unnatural level your somatostatin will kick in and try to knock down your growth hormone levels back to what should be kind of your status quo so to prevent you from being super physiologic okay so what are some examples of these well there's ghrp6 ghrp2 ipamorelin and pramorelin okay some people say ipamorelin and call it ipam for short. I think that's stupid, but they probably think the way I say ipamorelin is stupid. So who's to say what's right, okay? So that's the first bunch, the growth hormone releasing peptides. And then the next important group that I think you need to know about are the GHRHs, or the growth 
hormone releasing hormones. So there's the growth hormone releasing peptides and the growth hormone releasing hormones, okay? And so these basically stimulate the body to not only synthesize, but also to release more growth hormone into the bloodstream. And so this is a little bit different because it's not focused in the pituitary gland. This is actually focused from the hypothalamus, which then tells the pituitary gland to secrete growth hormone by also by increasing the number of growth hormone releasing cells called the somatotrope. So it works on a slightly different pathway than just the growth hormone releasing peptides, okay? These GHRHs, like we we're just talking about, they actually wouldn't do that much by themselves because you don't have that inhibition of the somatostatin. So if you just take like one of these, for example, is called like CJC1295, is a very common, very popular one. If you just take this by itself, it's probably not gonna do too much unless you take it with a GHRP as well because you need something that's gonna actually, once again, stop that somatostatin from limiting your growth hormone. So what are some examples of the GHRHs, okay? Well, we have Simorelin, okay? CJC1295, and then an important new one is called Tessimorelin, okay? And this is what I was actually talking with BD about. It's pretty interesting, but basically, the FDA actually approved this drug. So when you have HIV AIDS and you go on like an antiviral drug, this antiviral drug can cause something that's called lipodystrophy or lipodystrophy, okay? And what that means is you have an abnormal distribution of actually fat. And it's it's actually along like the viscera or basically along your organs. So it's not just like in your abdomen, like visible like belly fat. This is like internal on your organs, which can be very harmful. And so what they found is that when they gave these specific patients, HIV patients, getting antiviral drugs that had this, they were able to like unbelievably re reduce the amount of body fat, specifically like that visceral fat that they had by like astonishing amounts. Like if I'm not mistaken, it's like 75, like 50%. I mean, just like remarkable reduction in this lipodystrophy. And so some of the research is showing that as far as the GHRHs go, that this is actually one of the most potent ones, okay? I have not done a deep dive into this, guys, outside of basically what I'm making here for this video, but it is very interesting. And I'll put up a paper here where you can actually read more about it yourself or just go onto hopefully a, not just Google, but a source like PubMed and type in Tessa Morell and, and check it out, okay? So those are the two types. You have your GHRPs and your GHRHs, okay? If you're going to be using these to actually increase your growth hormone levels, which they actually do at a lot of these like longevity clinics, these like TRT type of clinics, um, they actually combine the two because when you combine the two, you limit the inhibition of growth hormone and then you're causing these increasing both production, increasing the number of cells that actually increase growth hormone. So you have multiple different pulses of growth hormone. Um, and so you can actually have have like pretty impressive increases in your growth hormone levels using these peptides, okay? So guys, one thing to know about, like I, peptides seem like they're new, they're all the rage. So you might not know this, but insulin is a peptide, okay? And so like insulin was like developed in like the 1920s. So this isn't like brand new technology. It's just becoming more popularized because of these different, I mean, honestly, these different peptides, these different amino acid chains that are developing. But anyways, this isn't like brand new, like hocus pocus science, guys. I mean, it's, it's real science. And so like if you were to take like a common combination that you can find is something called the CJC1295 uh, and then the ipamorelin. And so if you use these combined, you typically you take it before bed, fasted on an empty stomach. And so guys, this isn't one of those videos where we be like, oh, this is how you dose it. This is how you take it, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I've never done this. This is not going to be one of those videos where, uh, you know, I go through any detail with that. There are other videos or other papers where you can get dosing, but I'm just talking about in general, okay? You dose it before before bed, you want to be fasted because anything that's going to actually spike your insulin is going to make this peptide injection uh, basically null and void. And that basically goes for, as far as I know, most peptides, but you know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And so what are some of the other benefits of taking this? Well, it, you know, any other benefits of growth hormones. So like hair, nails, cognition, lean muscle mass, and sometimes decreases in fat along with that sometimes increases in appetite. You do want to be a little careful anytime you're messing with growth hormone because it can affect your insulin 
sensitivity. Most of what I have seen is that when you're taking things like these, like GHRHs, GHRPs, is that they are not going to affect your insulin levels quite like something like that MK677 would. But any, once again, anytime you're doing this, you want to get it from a doctor and you want to take it in a, in a monitored clinic so you can know what your like fasting glucose levels are to make sure you're not becoming more insulin resistant. I do think it's an important for these like GHRHs, GHRPs is that you do take them before bed because you do want to take it something that's going to make you have a more like natural spike. So one of the things that I preach is like deep sleep is so important. And that's why if you're doing PE, you want to make sure you're maximizing your sleep because that's when things like growth hormone are naturally released. And so if you take this before bed, it's going to more naturally mimic your release of your growth hormone. It's going to help you sleep better and it's going to be more within like a normal physiologic process. Okay. Also, when you're, when, if you're looking at CJC 1295, there's like a DAC and like a no DAC. I don't know what the DAC stands for. Sorry, guys. I haven't looked into that much. It's, it'll be easy to find. But basically, when you have the DAC or the DAC, it basically means it's a long acting formula. And so most of these peptides you're injecting at least once a day, sometimes even multiple injections. And so if you do have the CJC DAC, that is going to be like basically a once a week injection and it's a long acting. So it has a very long half life. From the little I've researched about this, that might not be a good idea when you're talking about growth hormone because you don't want to just be spiking GH all, all day. It's natural to have these like peaks and valleys of growth hormone secretion, which is why it's more physiologic to take it at night. I think that's going to lead to less long-term complications from that. Personally, if I was looking to do this, I would talk to a doctor and probably what I would be looking at would be doing a combination of the CJC-1295 and the Ipamorelin. You know, I'm just being honest. I do think it's better than the MK677. I can't say it's better than natural growth hormone. The problem with growth hormone, if you just take like human growth hormone, is that that will actually act almost like how if you take testosterone, it shuts down your body's natural testosterone production. If you take growth hormone, it's going to shut down your body's natural growth hormone. Whereas if you take these GHRH is these GHRPs, they are actually not going to shut down your body's natural peptide, natural growth hormone production. So when you come off of it, it's not like you have to go on like uh, some kind of like post-cycle therapy for, for growth hormone. You can just stop. It's just instead of having these huge pulses of growth hormone like you did when you were in your teens and 20s, you're going to have lower physiologic levels, which brings up another good point is that if you are a younger person, so your growth hormone levels really don't start to dip until you're like late 30s 40s and then they kind of decrease substantially and so if you are like in your 20s and you're trying to like take these you're probably not going to have the same benefit as somebody like my age you know into my 40s that you know where my growth hormone levels are naturally decreased and so I really think it's a bad idea you know whatever here's old man hink here for any of you guys to be on any kind of gear or like testosterone or any of that stuff and so this would be included in that but once again this is for the purposes of injury recovery and so getting that growth hormone to help with nerve regeneration to help with tissue regeneration to help with perfusion and so leviathansupps.com for any of the supplements that me and bd personally put together that is going to be well below any market price that you can find i can almost guarantee it especially when we're talking about the quality of the product we also have our test booster vitality that'll be out any day now okay please check that out i'm going to be putting a video out about that if you are looking for enlargement devices peakmalephysique.com has all those once again guys I guarantee you we're going to beat any price that you can find okay it's just it's just a fact okay if you need to reach me directly doc hink is my patreon you can reach me there until the next one guys thanks for watching i really appreciate you all love you all peace and love guys